In 2008, Robert Lyons had an argument with his mother. Apparently, she wasn't as big of a fan of Avril Lavigne as he was, and she refused to get in touch with a friend who could get him the tickets for an upcoming concert. Lyons had a fit over the incident and smashed his mother's head with a cognac bottle. It looks like Lyons' obsession with Avril was so strong that his outrage over the lack of tickets turned him into a brutal psychopath. He stabbed his mother nine times while she was passed out on the floor. To make things even more ridiculous, Lyons wasn't even a crazed teenager. He was a full-grown 40-year-old, who obviously had major anger management issues. We're pretty sure Miss Levine would not approve of such fandom. Getting unfriended on Facebook is an unpleasant experience for everyone. Janelle Potter was unfriended by Billy Payne Jr. and his girlfriend Jean Hayworth, and she was bitter enough about it to complain to her father. Her father, on the other hand, felt that what the couple did was unforgivable. He called up his friend Jamie Lynn Curd, who was in love with Janelle at the time, and convinced him that they needed to avenge his daughter. They took it a bit too far and ended up shooting the couple dead, leaving only their infant son alive. Let this serve as a warning. Don't be rude to people on Facebook. You never know who takes it seriously and who doesn't. No one likes to be photobombed, especially not when they're all dressed up and striking a pose during a party. Still, nobody gets too worked up over a photo gone wrong. Well, at least nobody except Candice Brito and Vanessa Zavala. The pair were so angry when 23-year-old Annie Hung Kim Pham photobombed them in front of a club that they beat her to death. The women are facing 11 years in prison. To say it was an overreaction is an understatement. How many times have you told your annoying siblings that you would kill them? Probably a million. How many times did you mean it? Probably never. A 13-year-old boy in Russia, however, meant it. His sister took charge of the remote control and wouldn't give it back. And her younger brother just wouldn't have any of it. He shot her point-blank with a hunting rifle. Boys will be boys. This is often said for teenagers who misbehave or throw tantrums. Sometimes, though, things do get out of hand. Normally well-behaved twins from Maury County reportedly had fights before, but those were considered normal sibling rivalry. Things obviously escalated beyond normal at one point, when all it took for Blake Bassler to snap and stab his twin brother was an unsatisfied chewing gum craving. The victim of his brother's rage, Blake died in a hospital after failed attempts to patch him up and save his life. Stanley Neese from Breathitt County was known for having quite an unpredictable temper. His landlord found that the man had become quite difficult. He claims that Neese would be set off by the smallest things. The landlord was so bothered by his aggressive behavior that he started the eviction proceedings. He sure was right to recognize signs of a lunatic in the making. Neese finally went on a rampage, shooting his wife, daughter, and four neighbors. What set him off? His wife prepared eggs, but not to his liking. They weren't hot enough. Hard to believe this was the reason behind a mass murder. Breakups can be very ugly and leave us bitter, angry, and full of resentment. Still, people normally deal with these things by acting out a little bit. Too much partying, angry text messages here and there, hateful gossiping, crying. These are some of the mainstream techniques of dealing with this sort of stress. Another technique tried out by 15-year-old Joshua Davies is murder. Davies was very angry after he broke up with Rebecca Alward, and he often told his friends that he was going to kill her, indulging in sadistic fantasies. Nobody thought he was actually going to do it. A friend even dared him, saying he would treat him to a breakfast if he actually went through with his plans. Davies decided to take the bets. After brutally beating his ex to death, he texted the aforementioned friend asking for the free breakfast he was promised. Alexandra Tobias was a Facebook addict like many of us. For her, however, the obsession with social media was a refuge, and a comfort probably a bit more than for most people. She had a rough life. She had a bipolar mother who she eventually found dead. She was raped. She had a baby with a boyfriend who wasn't in the mood for a serious relationship and that delayed her studies. Tobias coped with stress by playing online games, and she didn't like being interrupted. When her three-month-old baby started crying during a Farmville session, she needed to shut him up immediately. Unfortunately, she shut him up for good, murdering the infant. 
Sometimes it's hard to get along with our roommates. People can annoy you for many reasons. Not cleaning up after cooking, leaving their stuff lying around, not throwing out the trash, or simply not getting more toilet paper when it was their turn. For Franklin Paul Crow, the latter was the last straw. He and his roommate were continuously having arguments about this, and finally Crow just couldn't take it anymore. He killed his roommate with a sledgehammer and a claw hammer, enraged upon learning that he once again didn't get the toilet paper. Facebook can start and finish romances. All the likes, the invites, the pokes, the comments, the little chats. These flirtations have become a part of our everyday lives. While on the one hand they can create a spark between people, they can also drive the jealous types insane and end relationships or even end lives. Scott Humphrey certainly took Facebook affection seriously and just couldn't handle the fact that Richard Rivetto poked his girlfriend on Facebook. Humphrey was so enraged that he started a fight in a pub, which ended with Rivetto cracking his head open against the pavement and bleeding to death. 